the Arturia CS80 V, emulating the Yamaha CS80, and it was used in the Blade Runner soundtrack. So today we're going to create the Blade Runner brass, and in doing so, I'm going to explain every slider and every button, top to bottom, on the CS80 V. Just a quick reminder here, some people are telling me that they're not getting notifications, so be sure to subscribe, and then under this bell, uh, be sure and select all, and you'll get notifications every time I do a video. First thing you want to do is go up here to the upper left and select New Preset. The first thing I should point out is over here on the left you have Roman numeral 1 and Roman numeral 2. The CS80 was multi-timbral, and you could have two instruments playing at one time. You can have a patch along here, and a patch along Roman numeral 2. The settings are identical, but you could have, you could make one a bass patch and two a string patch. Then down here you have a mix section, where you can have patch 1 playing, a mixture of the two, or patch 2 playing. And of course, Arturia has added a lot of functionality in that you can have several patches playing in splits on the keyboard using this multi setting here. You can set different zones, one through four, and you can, over here on the right, you can decide what your key range is and how the oscillators We'll go in a random fashion, rotate, etc. You could have one patch that responds to the ARP while another patch doesn't. That could be very interesting. And you could set individual pans, volumes, and things like that. So, quite a bit of functionality there that the original CS80 didn't have, but that's not needed for the Blade Runner patch. So to start out with, we'll take a look at the VCO section, Voltage Controlled Oscillator. Come down here to the mix and turn it up on Roman numeral 1. So we're only dealing with this oscillator on top here. So your default patch is set up with the saw wave playing. And you also have the triangle wave and noise and the square wave and there's an LFO included here with the VCO section that can modulate your square wave with pulse width modulation and you can set the speed of that And you can set the waveform and how the LFO is going to be act activated, whether it's re-triggered. And you can sync it with the tempo of your DAW. While I'm here, just let me mention that this LFO here, that's intended for the pulse width modulation, and this LFO down here uh, on patch Roman numeral 2, um, with the modulation matrix, you can use those LFOs to modulate a number of destinations, both of them. Click it again, and now no oscillator is being heard right now, and click that until you hear the saw wave. We're using the saw wave for our project. Moving over to the filter section, you have the choice of low pass filter, high pass filter, it can be 24 dB by selecting this button and when you select a button it darkens and so we want to darken low pass filter and high pass filter the original CS80 was 12 dB and so by having this up it's a 12 dB low pass filter you have a slider for the filter frequency of the high pass filter and the resonance of the high pass filter then over here you have the filter frequency for the low pass filter and the resonance of the low pass filter. And over here is your filter envelope. IL is your initial level, AL is your attack level. And you can think of AL as being kind of like envelope depth. Filter all the way down. And 
if you turn attack level up, the filter is now being modulated by the envelope. So if I turn attack a little bit up and turn decay almost all the way up, I would expect a bell-shaped envelope to r slowly raise the filter frequency and then lower the filter frequency. And that's exactly what I heard. And of course the release is dealing with what happens after you let go of the key. Does it slowly fade away? If you raise this up, it will slowly fade away. And down, it will immediately fade away. And we probably want something in the middle. Okay, so the settings I have right now on the filter sound about right. And then on to the VCA. This basically is just a way to control the volume of your patch. And it has an envelope that acts a little differently. You have a tack, decay, sustain, release. And the difference is that this has a sustain. And this is very novel. The VCA section has a, a sine wave here that if you're using the high pass filter, you can add a little bit of beef back to your sound. You wouldn't want to use it too much or it starts actually sounding the sine wave. But uh, used very sparingly, it can add a little bit of beef back to your sound that this high pass filter is stripped away. And so moving on to the touch response section, which is key to the CS80 sound. First of all, it has an initial section here. You can think of that as key velocity on your MIDI controller. And so with the velocity, you can control the brilliance, which is the filter frequency, and the level, which is your VCA. So you can do velocity to filter and velocity to volume. Then there's the aftertouch section, and you can do aftertouch to filter and aftertouch to volume. So with this sound, aftertouch to the filter, we'll turn that all the way up, and velocity to filter about halfway up. And so when I strike the key, and then I push down, You can hear that we're starting to get there. I'm not saying that that's the Blade Runner patch, but you can hear we're starting to get there. Now let's say that your MIDI controller doesn't have aftertouch. You can sort of accomplish this another way. So I'll turn that down. Uh, under the panel here, you've got the modulation section. And so make your source your modulation wheel because most MIDI controllers have a modulation wheel and turn the amount all the way up and your destination will be um, low pass cutoff then use the wheel again for high pass cutoff now let's talk about this link button here um, Here's the strategy for this sound. We're going to use both of the patches uh, with a saw wave. And then down here, you can detune your patches. And so when I, when I hit this link button, what that does, it applies the VCF, VCA, and touch response to this patch as well. But I do have to choose the saw wave down here. And then it runs up here through this section. So just to make sure that I've got the saw wave, I can turn all oscillators off. I'm still hearing something, but I, I it's probably this sine wave up here because it's running up and then through there. But I can be certain that the, the square wave's off because that would be on and I can be sure that it's not 
the triangle wave. So that that's definitely the saw wave. So now if I go here to mix and turn it, if I double click it, it will go exactly halfway automatically. Now you hear that really phasey sound that you notice right away in the original. And so we need to add one more thing. There is a overall LFO. Back in the day, they called it the sub oscillator, and it's this section right here. And you can choose your wave shape for your LFO, which I've chosen sine wave. You can set the speed, and then you set the destination. You can send it to the VCO. You can send it to your filter. You can send it to your VCA. Uh, we're going to send it to the VCO. And you hear just enough to make it wobble a bit, and that's kind of what you hear in the original. It's not really a severe uh, wobble, but it's just enough to, to make things move around. And so we've got the patch now. This is the Blade Runner patch. So let me, so these are the settings. We're not using any of the multi or modulation stuff, unless you don't have aftertouch, in, in, in which case, uh, you know, you can use the modulation wheel to accomplish some of this. Uh, and so this is our patch. So if I've missed any settings or anything, just copy these settings. And let me go through the rest of the settings on the CS80V. So I didn't talk about sync. So here's what the sync button is used for. Okay, and down to the third section here, you have sub wheel, which is using your modulation wheel on your MIDI controller to control the speed of the sub oscillator. And if you hover over that, you can see down in the lower left there, it says sub osc speed modulation. And of course, sub oscillator is the LFO. And so if I hit that sub wheel button and I move my modulation wheel, you can see that moving. Now on the original CS80, I believe that this outer ring was, uh, outer and inner rings were um, coarse and fine tuning. And so Arturi has retained that that little wheel there and made it, given it another function. And then you have the ring modulator section and this is for making bell-like sounds and metallic-like sounds. Um, and up is off for all of these. Here you have the overall frequency of your oscillators and it's in conventional feet as it was on the old organs. So And then these are all your presets. They have presets like clarinet, guitar, you know, the basic presets. And you next to the mix here, you have an overall brilliance and resonance. And here uh, under this touch response section here, you have initial pitch bend. So it kind of imitates some instruments that have an initial pitch bend uh, in, as part of their attack. Then you have these three sliders that are really part of this LFO over here um, because they're used to apply aftertouch to increase the speed of your LFO and use it for tremolo if you want to do, the, do it that way, if you don't want to have always on type of uh, LFO as we have with our Blade Runner patch. And then you have keyboard control where you can, if you feel that your bass notes are quieter than your notes in the higher frequencies, you can adjust this globally, global volume. And then you have an arpeggiator, which the original one didn't have. And then this is the famous slider on the CS80. My DeepMind 12 that I'm using as my controller doesn't have that. It does have aftertouch, but so this is really like a pitch bend wheel in my 
DeepMind 12 uh, does have that, and most controllers do have a pitch bend wheel. So when I move my pitch bend wheel, I see a red line on there that's showing me that it's bending the pitch. And you definitely use that with your Blade Runner patch. And some adjustments for that ribbon. And then down here you have, you can do a, a wah pedal with your sustain pedal. Uh, and it, it has portamento, but it has a an interesting type of portamento that you can do uh, that the Jupiter 6 also has. It's called glissando. So instead of sliding up to the note, it can play every note along the way. And so let me see if I can make it do that. And you have chorus and delay. And that is the entire CSADV.